21,000 something most probably. Try this, try this. Quickly. See, even if... Alright, let me, let me do the sum for you. Very easy question I've given to you. So if you're not able to solve the question, the first thing you do is you start putting the information what you have. So I'm going to invest X over here. I want the amount to become X plus 500, correct? I will take out 500. Again, X will get reinvested over here. And again, this will become X plus 500. And I will take out this 500. This is what happens in a perpetuity. So I want X to become X plus 500. Is this okay? So the amount, matlab, the amount has to become X plus 500. This has to be a future value which is equal to present value x into e to the power 0.09 into 3 by 12. That's it. Hmm. Understand what we are doing. I want to invest an amount x today. I want that to become x plus 500. Because 500 is a perpetuity. I want a perpetuity of 500. I want to be able to take out 500 forever and ever. That means the reinvested principal has to be the same. The interest for three months period has to be 500. Only then the principal gets reinvested and again 500 by interest is there. And this goes on forever. This is what the idea is, right? If you understand, see, that is why I told you, you mug up the formula of perpetuity, you'll get stuck in this question. You apply common sense, you'll be able to solve this question. The future value is x plus 500. Present value is x. x becomes kitna? x plus 500. x into e to the power point zero. 9 to the power 3 by, into 3 by 12 is equal to x plus 500. Now all I have to do is solve. This is how much? 0 0.0225, right? Ln 0 0.0225 second ln. Correct? Twenty one nine seventy three point one six, and those who are giving me the answer five thousand something, really bad. Approximately, your per annum interest rate is nine percent. You're getting five hundred about four times in a year. So even if I assume simple interest basis for the time being, I'm requiring two thousand per annum. So nine percent of principal is two thousand. Two thousand by point nine percent will be not will cannot be five thousand. Five thousand ka ten percent is five hundred. But you want 10% kind of a thing four times in a year. Even if you're looking at an approximation, even if you don't understand the formula, you still can say that the answer is supposed to be somewhere close to 20,000, uh, sorry, 2000 by 0 0.09. 22,000. The answer has to be somewhere close to 22,000. Even if you do not understand compound interest and, sorry, continuous rates and all, you should be able to answer that. I'm getting 500 four times a year. So on a per annum basis, I'm needing $2,000. If I'm ignoring any kind of uh, continuous rate, compounding, etc., I'm doing a very, very rough calculation. You need 2000 per annum, right? So 9% of something has to be 2000. So 2000 by 9% is 22,000. Getting it? That is why I'm telling you always apply common sense. You'll understand where you could go wrong. Why this answer cannot be the answer? Answer is wrong, okay. But why is this answer wrong? Or why cannot this, this, this answer cannot be the answer? The answer has to be in this kind of ballpark figure range. That you should be able to calculate. Getting the idea? Interesting. Got it? So this is the answer. Another way of looking at it could be that we understand the perpetuity formula that my answer is supposed to be 500 divided by I, the interest rate, I by Y, whatever. Now this rate has to be X percent per annum. I need this so I can do x by 4 and put the rate over here, correct? Because my cash flow is on a quarterly basis. So if I know what is the rate per quarter, I can get this answer done. Now e to the power 0 0.09, 1 becomes this much in one year. This is your EAY. EAY say quarterly rate can't you go? 1 becomes e to the power 0 0.09 in one year, right? So in one year this much, so one quarter how much? This much minus 1. Into 4 karne ka hai because this is exactly what I need to put over here. 
you can do into 4 that is quarterly compounding rate divided by 4 is your i by y i by y is the rate per period tell me are you following this this is ea by ea by to the power 1 fourth minus 1 into 4 is your quarterly rate divide by 4 you can put it over here you could have solved this question this way also you can convert and if you know the continuous rate to ea by ea by so you know how to convert it to anything at all right Nine. Huh. So this is nine. One becomes one point zero nine one nine four one seven four. This is what one becomes in one year. So in one quarter, how much? To the power one fourth, which is one point zero two two seven five five minus one. That is two point two seven five five percent. This is what becomes in one quarter. This into 4 is basically your x percent per annum compounded quarterly. 9.1020%. So basically 9% CC is equal to 9.4174 percent annual is equal to 9.10 quarterly they are all equivalent rates all these rates are equal 9.1020 quarterly rate means one becomes how much 0.091020 by 4 we have to tell i by y is the rate per period and the cash flow is happening quarterly i hope this is clear problem bolna kahan pe problem hai Ah, so E Y is E to the point zero nine, which is one point zero nine four one seven four. This is per annum compounding. What is quarterly compounding? To the power one fourth minus one into four. So this nine point one zero two zero is quarterly compounding rate. I by Y is what? Rate per period. So this is nine point one zero two zero by four, which is two point two seven five five. It is exactly that only. Obviously, answer the same here. Whichever method you follow, answer is going to be the same, obviously. But I'm saying you could have calculated this way also. This is also another way you can calculate. Normally, students would do the second one. But if I do not want to mug up the formula or just convert mechanically from a continuous to E Y to quarterly and then do the sum applying the formula, I want to know the logic also. Why can't I do it this way? If I'm investing an amount x, x is what we need to find out, right? So if I'm investing x, that needs to become x plus 500 because I'm going to take out 500. So x again gets reinvested at the same rate. It's again going to become x plus 500. That's exactly what is the logic behind the derivation of perpetuity formula. That your principles become principle becomes the same. So this interest has to be 500 because I'm going to take out the entire interest and the principle, the constant, the principle is going to remain constant uh, because it is not getting your interest is not getting reinvested away. It's a perpetuity. Tell me clear. Easy question. 